So last time we solved this problem, this was actually a very big problem. But uh, uh, do you think you have any question related to that? Did you saw it? Did you, did, you see, did you see this yes, problem? Yes, we, we yes, saw there all the night. I have so I So you do understand it? Yes, of course. Any, 100%. Anything that you do not understand in the problem, you can ask. It's very easy. Very easy? <coughs> Good. If brother says it's easy, then it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, let's move to the next problem. Now, I'm not going to solve this problem with you guys. Just discuss it a little, and then I will move ahead, OK? So, because it's the same concept which is following throughout, OK? So, you have the hot air which flows at a mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate given. OK. So, mass flow rate given through an uninsulated sheet metal duct of diameter 0.15. Normally, sheet metal duct, when we consider, these are the production line terms. But these things you should know. So when we say sheet metal duct, we mean very thin plate. So anything made up of thin plate, a pipe made up of thin plate, so there is no inner dia, outer dia, just one dia. Because the conductive resistance is negligible if the thickness is very small. So, is, so it is made up of sheet metal duct, so just one diameter given, okay? Uh, which is in crawl space of a house. What is a crawl space? You know crawling? Go, uh, sitting on the ground and moving like this. So crawl space is any space which is uh, uh, at the ground side, but uh, you know empty ducted side. I will leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in the crawl space of a house. The hot air enters at 103 degrees centigrade after a distance of length 5 meter cools to 85 degrees centigrade. Basically, this is a pipe, a hot air entered into the pipe. Automatically, since the hot air entered into the pipe, there will be heat loss from the pipe. So, after it has traveled f uh, 5 meter, its temperature drop. How much drop? To 85 degrees. The heat transfer coefficient between the duct outer surface and the ambient air is uh, at T infinity 0 degree centigrade. So ambient air is at 0 degree centigrade, probably they are in Canada. Okay. <laughs> so so t t ambient air at T infinity 0 degree centigrade is known to be H naught 6 watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay. So uh, this is a heat transfer coefficient H is not outer side, outer side heat transfer coefficient. Uh, calculate the heat loss from the duct over the entire length. Determine the heat flux and the duct surface temperature at x equals to L. Now, if you see in this problem, the first part is very simple. You know the air inlet temperature, you know the air outlet temperature. How much the energy lost by the air, you can calculate it very simply m dot Cp delta T. Okay, so that was the first part. Find out how much is the energy loss. So air was heated, and then obviously heat loss comes as it flows through the through the duct. So how much is the heat loss? M dot Cp delta T. M dot given Cp. Find out, okay, delta T. You know. So that is uh, 910 watt. Nothing new in it. Then the second part is that uh, find out the heat flux at x is equals to L. Okay. We have find out the heat flux and also determine what is the temperature uh, of the pipe at length 5 meter. Okay. So, it is air starts to flow from here and then at a length of 5 meter, what is the temperature here of the, of the pipe? Fluid temperature is given, but of the pipe, what is the temperature? Like the experiment in the lab. Yeah, like the experiment in the lab. Okay. So, so in this case, now you need to use the formula Q is equals to, uh, since we need to find H heat flux first, so Q is equals to H delta T, right? This is the formula that you have to use. Q is equals to H delta T. 
Now, uh, the thing is that you have this pipe and uh, heat is lost from the fluid in the pipe to outside. Okay. Now, the pipe has no thickness. Pipe has no thickness. So, basically overall heat transfer coefficient, overall resistance will be what? So, you will have a convective resistance inside. Convection resistance. And then you have a convective resistance outside. Yes. Right? That's the overall. If there was a thickness, then you would have the conductive resistance of the thickness as well. But now you will not have any conductive resistance of the thickness. Just convective resistance inside, convective resistance outside. Okay? So that's the thing. So since we are considering the overall heat transfer coefficient, instead of writing H, let me call it U. Delta T. Right? Now, what will be the U depends upon what delta T you are taking. So you have T mean here, you have T infinity here, and you have T surface here. Right? Mm -hmm. So, if I say that delta T is T infinity, uh, no, so T, T surface minus T infinity, then what will be U? The, the convection resistance. Convection resistance up for, for the outside. Right? So, it will be, let's call it. If I say that delta T is T, uh, T M minus T S. And what will be U? In, inside. Inside it was. If I say delta T is T M minus T infinity. Overall. So overall will be what? The convection and the convection. Uh, the convection, no, not radiation. No, 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 no. Convection of the inner plus convection of the outer. Yes. Huh? That's the thing. This was the main thing in here. That's what I needed to discuss. So we have TML, temperature of the mean at length L. We have the T surf, temperature of the surface. We have the T infinity. Okay. So here, resistance will be 1 upon HXL, which is the inner uh, resistance, inside resistance of the pipe. This is the outside resistance of the pipe. Okay? This H0 is given. H0 is given. Okay? So, so if you. Checks. Checks. But this is not given inside. It has a thickness. There is so will be. So, so, so suppose, suppose you have thickness. You have a homework problem with the thickness as well. Okay? So if you have thickness, so you have one resistance here, so from Tm to so now, if you have thickness, then you have two surf two temperatures, T surface in, T surface out. Okay, so so it will be from T surface T M O to T surface in, then from T surface in to T surface out, then from T surface out to T infinity. Okay, so that will be one upon H. Uh, I let's say call it inlet. This will be one upon H outlet, and this will be what? Conduction and what is conduction? L upon uh, L upon K. Right. Mm. Okay. So, so uh, but here since we have the the uh, conductive resistance is almost negligible. It's a very thin sheet. Yes. So T S O and T S I are same. So it's just one point. So it's like this. Hmm? Now in this problem T H not is given. But Hi is the inside convective heat transfer coefficient, and this is something you have to determine. Now, you have to follow the same procedure. First, determine the Reynolds number. Based on the Reynolds number, decide if it is a laminar flow, if it is a turbulent flow. Then, if based on the Reynolds number and Prandtl number, decide if it is laminar flow, which which equation you have to use. If it is turbulent flow, which equation you have to use. Then, you find the Nusselt number. Once you know the Nusselt number, you will find the H. And then you substitute it and find. So procedure is the same. Procedure is the same. The only thing why I'm, I, I was discussing this question is because of this concept. OK? Because of this concept. So here, first we need to find out uh, uh, the heat flux. Since we don't know Ts, since we don't know Ts, 
So for heat flux, we take between T M L and T infinity overall. because we know overall. overall because we know both the temperatures T M L and T infinity, but we don't know T S, so we ignore that. We take it overall, and that's why we have to now take the overall heat transfer coefficient. The overall for the overall heat transfer coefficient, we know what is H naught, but we know we need to find what is H X, which is the H I inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first we did we determine the Reynolds number. Reynolds number comes out to be the formula is the same Reynolds number 4m dot over pi d mu. Okay, the Reynolds number comes out to be 20,050. So what do you think? Is it a laminar flow or turbulent flow? Turbulent. Turbulent. Okay, because uh, le less than 2,300 laminar, greater than 10,000 turbulent. That's for internal flow. These these things should be, uh, what do you say, fingertips should be on your fingertips now. So we have the Reynolds number. Now, based on the Reynolds number, we have to decide that uh, what uh, formula for turbulent flow you have to use. Okay. Now you also have the Prandtl number. The Prandtl number is what? 0 0.698. 0 0698. Okay. Now let's go to the formula sheet. Uh, okay, here. These are the turbulent flow. Okay, three equations. So which one you have to use? I think there is two as well in the last slide. There is a two. Last. But they are not for yeah. heat transfer coefficient. These are for yes. F. Yes. That's uh, friction factor. What was the Prandtl number? Prandtl was 0 0.698. 0 0.69. Okay. So we'll use the upper one. No. Yes. no. First one, yes, we will use the first one. 0.698 is in the range of all three. Is in the range of all three. But I told you, but 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 I told you that you. But if it is in this range, then you have to. It, it, the result will be more accurate. You have to use this. Don't use this equation only and only if. Prandtl number is within not this within, within not this range. So suppose if Prandtl number is uh, 180, then you cannot use this. Automatically you shift here. Otherwise, if you can use this, then use this. Okay. So we'll use the Dittus border. The Dittus border correlation. Uh, what will be n? N. We don't know the S yet. But we know one thing, heat is lost or heat is gained. It will be it's hmm? it's it's lost. No, you need to tell me what will be n. So T s is less than T mean. Correct. Okay. So, 0 0.3, and uh, that's it. Find the Nusselt number, then find H, substitute, find QS. Okay. That's the heat flux. And then, when we need to find the temperature, uh, temperature of the surface. Okay. Now we know the heat flux, so we take, we can take any of the two. Yes. Sir. Okay. So they have taken the inside one, which we calculated. But let's say if you take the outside one. So then QS will be, instead of having TML minus TSL, it will be TSL minus T infinity. Yes. And then it will be 1 upon H naught, whatever the H naught given. Yes. Both are okay. Yes. Okay. So use this and find out TSL. That's it. Any, 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 anything you need to ask about this problem? Okay. No. Needs a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, now it, this is, is uh, we are not solving any problem for the non circular tube, but I have placed one pro problem as a homework problem in the non circular tube uh, section. Okay, there is so no, uh, tube, uh, square tube. There is a square tube. Uh, no, no, uh, there, there, there are. There, there are ducts, square ducts. Uh, for example, have you seen the ducts which yes, are yes, taking yes, the yes, air? Yes, yes. They are square shaped. 
So there is air flowing inside it. So we can have a square shaped duct, we can have a rectangular shaped duct with the different uh, as, uh, aspect ratios, okay? And uh, then we can have a triangular duct. We can have, we can have anything. So for the circular, okay. So if we have a non-circular tube, then for the laminar case, for the laminar flow case, the Nusselt numbers are these, depending upon which case you have. Okay, for the laminar flow, the Nusselt numbers are these. And uh, if it is the turbulent flow, then you use the regular uh, dittus burter correl correlation. And uh, uh, the hydraulic diameter, you always determine based on this. So this is the formula for hydraulic diameter. And this you should remember. Although it will be there in the formula sheet as well, but you should remember it. Now, we have one problem for this as well. We are not solving it in the class, but in the homework we have, I have put one problem for uh, concentric tube annulus. Uh, what is an annulus? Same. I thought you asked about concentric. No, no. So what is annulus? So if you have a pipe, and a pi another pipe is there inside this big pipe and the flow is flowing and the fluid is flowing between the two pipes so thickness. Hmm? So no thickness. no no this this is one pipe this is another pipe pipe inside the, and the f and the fluid is flowing within this region yes, the thickness. okay thickness <laughs> <laughs> okay within this region this is the empty region Okay, so if the fluid is flowing within this region, then this region is known as annulus region. This region is known as annulus region. Okay, so now there is a possibility of heat transfer from both sides, here and here, right? Because both sides we have uh, air. Okay, what will be the hydraulic diameter? For finding the Reynolds number, you need to know the hydraulic diameter. So, can you do it? Cal calculate it. Do it now. What is the hydraulic diameter? Four A S upon what? Four A S A A S. Sorry, four A upon P. We need the sheet. Uh, the rules. The hydraulic diameter is four A upon P. Okay, now you know the rule. <laughs> this A is not the surface area, this is a cross section area through which the flow is flowing. What? This A is the cross section area through which the fluid is flowing. Cross hmm? section P is the parameter. The, a, the, the, the areas or, or, or the parameter through which the fluid is touching. So when the fluid, fluid is flowing from inside, so what are the areas fluid is touching? Touch fluid is touching this parameter and fluid is touching this parameter. So parameter is some of these yes. areas. You don't have a paper and a pen. Yes, go. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, the hydraulic diameter for, for this case is D0 minus DI. But I can give you an exam for two marks, prove it. Okay, so now you have to do it. So prove it, two marks, that hydraulic, uh, hy hy hydraulic diameter <laughs> for annulus region. So for do the you mean now? We do it, uh, no. No. Sure. Correct. Uh, uh, but why? Why you put L here? It's just the parameter. The surface. Uh, but the surface area. Not the sur Not the surface area. Parameter. So just remove the L from here, and that's okay.
So hydraulic diameter is 4a upon p, okay, so in this case 4 multiplied by a, cross section area will be what? Total area minus this half, this area of the hammer, okay, so it will be pi by 4 d naught square minus d i square, right? What will be the uh, parameter? Parameter will be pi d naught plus d i. Pi pi will cancel, 4 4 will cancel, d naught square minus d i square upon d naught plus d i. This is equals to d naught minus d i. Okay. In this case. In this case, yes. Suppose sup suppose it is this case, and fluid is flowing through this region. Find out the hydraulic diameter. <laughs> Look, I f if I need to test your understanding, I know how to play. <laughs> <You're all good. laughs> is, it, is, is it clear or not? Yes. Good. So anyways, uh, we have two different cases. In one of the cases, uh, uh, if we have uniform heat flux maintained at both the surfaces. So you have an inner surface and then you have an outer surface. Okay, And if the uniform heat flux is coming from the top as well as from the bottom. From, from the inner pipe, there is a uniform heat flux coming. There is a, from outside, there is uniform heat flux coming. If this is the case, then you have to use this table and you have to use these formulas. Study it yourself. You will have to do it when you will be solving the homework problem. There's nothing new in it. Just check out the diameter ratios and take the value from the table and plug in here. That's it. And uh, that's it. And if it is uh, for, for a different case, for example, uh, if it is for a case with one surface insulated and other heated, then you have to use this table and directly you get the Nusselt number in a Nusselt number outer. Okay. So anyways, just go through it yourself. Let's move towards the next topic which is the last topic for chapter 8. This chapter 8 has really uh, taken a lot of time. So this is the last topic. Convection mass transfer. You said the mass in the last chapter. Yeah, it is there in the last chapter, but there is a small portion here as well. Okay, so this is convection mass transfer. So, uh, look, the, the reason why mass transfer is not discussed much is because it follows the same analogy as the heat transfer. Same analogy, okay? So, for the heat transfer, what do you have? You have Q is equals to H A delta T, right? Q is what? Rate of heat transfer. So in mass transfer it will be rate of mass transfer. H is the heat transfer coefficient. So in, so in the mass transfer case it will be mass transfer coefficient. Area is the area through which mass transfer is occurring. Delta T, the reason of heat transfer was the change of temperature. If there is a temperature difference, then the heat will transfer. So what is the reason because of which mass will transfer? Pressure. No, we are not talking about that. Yeah. We are talking about mass diffusion. Okay? So no. It is a concentration difference. Concentration difference. So suppose, uh, suppose you take uh, uh, two uh, two containers, okay, or, or not say two containers. Normally, they give in the examples of uh, uh, 10th standard, 11th standard books, they give example of like this, that if you have a container like this, there is oxygen, there is nitrogen, diffusion. okay, diffusion, right? And wh what you do is that you make a hole, okay? Although this is a stationary, this is a stationary, this is at the same temperature as this, so there is no reason they to mix, but still they will mix. Why they will mix? Because of the diffusion, because of the concentration difference. 
So there was zero oxygen here, there was full 100% here. There is a concentration difference. Automatically oxygen will transfer from high concentration to low concentration. There is 100% nitrogen here, there is no nitrogen here. But automatically nitrogen will transfer because of the concentration difference. There is 100%, there is zero. So from high to low. Okay. So when there is no other reason, there is no ex external force to, to make oxygen and nitrogen mix. There is no temperature difference that will cause them to move. Okay. There the is other uh, example without so oxygen and nitrogen. So you, you, will, you will do uh, an experiment for the mass transfer. The very last experiment that you will do is we will take one, uh, on one beaker, we will take uh, pure water. I mean, the, the, it's, it's pure water, no salt mixing okay. in it and and then we will make a salty water uh, in in a in a pipe with capillaries okay so we will put the salty water capillary pipe into the pure water and uh, we will keep them stationary and see the conductivity automatically you will see that the salty water will keep on mixing with the pure water mm -hmm. and that mixing is because of the concentration difference okay. like uh, the principle of entropy like when you put milk in that sea, eventually it will sure, through, sure. through all that sea. You, you, you've taken this course no, before? No, not yet. Nice. Just, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> nice. He, he has given the perfect example, actually. MashaAllah. <laughs> <laughs> that is too much for me. <laughs> OK. So, so the thing is that here, why this transfer will occur, why this, why this diffusion will occur, because of the concentration difference, okay? So, uh, we write it here, a mass transfer rate is equals to Hm, mass uh, transfer coefficient, area is the same as surface area, and instead of delta T, we say delta rho, concentration difference. Okay. Now, for finding the mass transfer, uh, uh, mass trans, uh, ma what what was the name of it? Coefficient. 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 <laughs> mass transfer. For finding the mass transfer coefficient, you will use the same formulas you use for the heat transfer. Ditter's Boiter. Whether you check whether it is laminar, whether it is turbulent. Same formulas. The only difference is that. Uh, you were using Reynolds number and Prandtl number for the for that case. Reynolds number you will use as it is, but Prandtl number was what? V upon alpha, right? Uh, momentum diffusion divided by thermal diffusion. Now there is no thermal diffusion. Now there is mass diffusion. So so instead of alpha you will use D here, and like in the tables you get alpha, you will also get D in the from the tables. That's a diffusion coefficient. Okay, so you will use that, and now its name is changed. It is not Prandtl number. We call it Schmidt number. Schmidt number. <laughs> okay, so so this is Schmidt number. And uh, previously you used the Reynolds number and Prandtl number to find Nusselt number, right? But now you will not use Reynolds number and Prandtl number. You use Reynolds number and Schmidt number. So instead of finding Nusselt number, we now call it Sherwood number. Sherwood. Sherwood. SH. <laughs> SH. Okay. So I show you. It's not written. So you see here Sherwood number. Sherwood. So it's the same as Nusselt number, except that now since you are not using Reynolds and Prandtl, you are using Reynolds and Schmidt, so we call it Sherwood number. D but hmm? D, D is alpha was the yeah, thermal diffusion. D is the, is the mass diffusion, mass, mass diffusivity. Okay. okay. How quick the mass transfer? <coughs> so let's come directly to a numerical problem. <laughs> no. You know, in chapter 14, there is something else. <laughs> this is the beginning. In chapter 14, you will study the fixed diffusion law, which is different than this. Which means fixed diffusion law. So 
We'll see. We'll see. Okay, <clears throat> a thin liquid film of ammonia which is formed on the inner surface of a tube or of diameter 10 millimeter and length uh, 1 meter is removed by passing dry air through the tube at a flow rate of 3 into 10 power 4 kg per second. The tube and the air are at 25 degrees centigrade. What is the average mass transfer coefficient? The thing is that you have a tube. Inside the tube you have some ammonia film. You know ammonia is a liquid. Sometimes liquid is stick to the surface of the tube. You want to remove ammonia. So how do you do is that you take dry air and you pass the dry air through it. Automatically there will be mass transfer and ammonia which is stick inner side of the pipe will transfer into the into the air and will come out. Okay, So this is the mass transfer which is going through. The ammonia is at the same temperature as that of the air. Ammonia is also a pipe and ammonia are at 25 degrees centigrade and the air with that you are blowing through is also at 25 degrees centigrade. So there is no temperature difference. It is the mass diffusion which will cause the ammonia to shift into the air. Is clear? So now we need to determine that uh, what is the average mass transfer coefficient in this case. Okay. Now for this case we have the mass flow rate of the air given, temperature is given. So we can determine the properties of air okay and uh, after that there is d for for d which is the mass diffusion of ammonia with air d will always be between two parameters because we are about talking about mixing of two fluids okay so here for am ammonia air d value is this and it comes from table a8 so go to the table a8 and see it yourself Anyways, then you determine the Schmidt number. Schmidt number will be mu upon d, as said here. Okay, and it comes out to be 0.56. Remember, whenever we talk about the diffusivity, diffusivity has the same units: meter square per second. When it was kinematic viscosity, meter square per second. When it was alpha, meter square per second. When it is mass diffusivity, meter square per second. So they have the same units and that's why Prandtl number, Schmidt number, they are dimensionless. Okay, so as uh, the previous case, what we have to do is that first we determine the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is what? 4 m dot upon pi d mu, right? M dot is given, diameter is given, mu you will use okay, from the table, okay? for air. So once you do that, you'll find out that Reynolds number is 2080. What do you think? Reynolds number 2080. Why for the air? Why the, for the ammonia? Because the air is actually flowing. Yeah, no. the, main, the, the main flow is of the air. When we talk about the Reynolds number, this is for the fluid which is flowing. Okay. So what do you think? Laminar. So good, laminar. Because less than 2300. Okay. So whenever you're writing this in the exam, you have to tell. You do not have to assume that I know that it is less than 2300. That's why it is laminar. You have to tell that you are using laminar because it is less than 2300. Okay. So now you know that it is laminar. You need to find what? You need to find average, right? Average mass transfer coefficient. So let's go to the formula sheet. Okay. For the laminar, these are the formulas, right? So where are the average ones coming? Everyone, average one is here and here, right? Yes. Laminar. So what are the what is the difference between these two formulas? We discussed that last time. So how would you how would you determine which one we which one we will use? Now you have two formulas here. Prandtl number. <coughs> yes. So, so our Prandtl number is how much? Let's go back. Okay. Our. Okay. Our Prandtl number is how much? We did not find Prandtl number, but we find what? As I told you, Prandtl is shifted with Schmidt. 
So we find the Schmidt number, and this is how much? 0.56. But the same law will be applied. So in the table where we were using the Prandtl number to check the conditions, now use the Schmidt number, but consider the Prandtl the same. 0.56. Okay. So let's go back. Now tell me, 0.56, which formula to use? Second one. Good, because first one is for Prandtl number greater than 5. We have 0.56, so cannot use this one. So you have to use this one. See? Simple formula. <laughs> Only the difference is that, now, now grades number, how would you find grades number? D is the same, X is the same. A Reynolds number is the same. Instead of Prandtl number, you will write here Schmidt. That's it. Use the formula of the use the value of the Schmidt number. And once you use this equation, instead of Nusser number, what you will be getting? Sherwood number. Sherwood number. This formula is difficult to put it on our calculator. Don't put it step by step. No, inshallah, two minutes, hardly three minutes. With practice, you you will have. Practice two minutes, three minutes will reduce to one minute, maybe. I'll give you three minutes extra, no problem. <laughs> okay. Can I ask? Okay, so uh, now we calculate the Sherwood number. Once we know the Sherwood number, we will use the Sherwood number to find out the mass transfer coefficient. The relation between them is? It's the same as the Nusselt number. Only the difference, yeah, there is one difference. Uh, Nusselt number is uh, H D upon K. K, right? But K is what? Thermal conductivity. Is there any thermal difference we have? No. no. no we, so have D. we have put here D. Okay. But this D is the diffusion yes. and yes. this is the diameter. Yes. Okay. Doctor, there is other some say, AB, the first one is AB. Yeah, okay, I put here AB. What? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Right, it is here, sorry. It's clear? So that's why normally mass transfer is not taught because it follows the same analogy as the heat transfer. Only the difference is that you, instead of Prandtl number, you have the Schmidt number. Instead of Nusselt number, you have the Sherwood number. Okay, so that's the difference. Otherwise, you use the same formulas, same uh, equations. Just change this thing. Okay. No. No, no. It is the, they made it for H. So H will be. Okay. So, so it will not be Nusselt number, it will be Sherwood number. What is this N? N. So otherwise we had the heat transfer. Now there is no heat transfer, the mass transfer. Okay. So anyways, so Alhamdulillah chapter number 8 is finished. Now we, we have to move towards the next chapter. No, not the building. Yeah, we, have to, we, have, we have a lot of time now. Don't you just have eight? We have 40 minutes left. 40? Yeah. 40? There's a break, 40 minutes after this break. Huh? <laughs> no. 40 minutes left? Minutes. We can inshallah finish chapter number 9. Oh. <laughs> air. Zero velocity air. Just the motion is because of the convection current, because of the buoyancy effect. Okay. So it's quiescent, motionless. Uh, suppose you have a plate, that's the heated plate. If we have a heated plate, automatically what will happen? There will be flow of the fluid. Okay, the fluid here nearby will get heated up and will move up and as it moves up a boundary layer will be generated because in any case the plate is stationary so there will be no flow at the at the surface velocity is zero 
So again, in this case, the velocity profile will look like this. Okay. In the case of uh, force convection, how does the velocity profile look like? Force convection, the velocity profile look like this. Okay. So it starts from zero all, and then goes like this. This is how the velocity profile used to look like in case of force convection, where you have the u infinity here. Okay, but in case of the free convection, it starts from zero and z zero. It started from zero, but it increased. Okay, but here it will start from zero and end at zero, come back to zero because this is quiescent fluid here, quiescent fluid. So this is how the velocity gradient would look like on a vertical plate. This is how the temperature gradient will look like. So we have a hot temperature here and then temperature keeps on drop until it becomes equal to the temperature of the ambient air. Okay. Now this is the analysis of boundary layer analysis. This is a similar kind of analysis that we had in chapter 6 that we skipped and so here we are not going to focus over it as well. This is the x momentum, y momentum, energy balance, mass balance for the flow. In chapter number 6 we did it for the case of forced con force convection of if, if there was any force flow. Now this is if the flow is because of the buoyancy effect, that's the difference. So when we have the buoyancy effect, uh, in order, you know, we use sometimes approximations to simplify our problem. So there is an approximation which is normally used, Boissonesque approximation. Okay. Anyways, we are not going to go into that detail that what is this and everything. But after approximating things, it turns out that uh, now the Nusselt number, we, we are concerned with the Nusselt number because we want to know the heat transfer coefficient. Okay, So now previously the Nusselt number used to depend upon two things, Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now Reynolds number is for a force convection, but now we do not have any force convection. Now we do not have any forced flow. So now Reynolds number is not significant. We, after doing this analysis, we come out, uh, after doing this di dimensionless analysis, we come out with another number, which is known as Grashof number. So, mashallah, you have studied many, many numbers, yeah. starting from the Bayard, Fourier, Reynolds, Prandtl, Nusselt, Greats, Schmidt, Sherwood. <laughs> and now this is another number, Grashof number. He's Russian. I don't know. <laughs> and the Grashof number has a formula like this. Grashof number is equals to G is the gravity. 9.81. Beta. Beta is what? Beta is volumetric thermal expansion coefficient. Beta is volumetric thermal expansion coefficient. But how do we get its value? By applying the uh, Boissonesque approximation, the formula for beta turns out to be beta is equals to 1 upon Tf. That's it. Tf is the mean, mean film temperature. So you have heated plate at 100 degree, you have atmosphere at 20 degree, so mean film will be average, average. And in one Kelvin. In Kelvin and one, one, upon one upon that is beta, that's it, okay. Multiply by T surface minus T infinity into L cube, L cube is the length of the board, so, so it's always this length in which direction the fluid is moving. Okay, divided by mu square. So this is the Grashof number. Instead of Reynolds number, now the more important number here for you is the Grashof number. 
okay, for the case of free convection. Now, this page or especially this area is very important for your analysis, for your understanding, okay? This area is very important and it shows that, look, Reynolds number was what? Reynolds number provides the measure of the ratio of inertia to viscous forces. What is Grashof number? Grashof number is a measure of ratio of buoyancy forces to the viscous forces. Now we do not have inertia forces. Inertia forces was the external force which were, we were putting, which, which, which caused the fluid to move, okay? So inertia force was the external flow. Now, the, now we do not have any external force to make the fluid to flow. It is the buoyancy force which is making the fluid to move, okay? So this Grashof number is the ratio of buoyancy forces to viscous forces. That was inertia forces to viscous forces. Grashof number is buoyancy forces to viscous forces. Okay, and uh, for any problem, if you want to determine, sometimes, you know, let's say the plate is heated, and suppose this heated plate is put uh, in this room, but I put a fan here, and the fan is also running. Okay, now we need to know that the heat transfer which is occurring through this plate. Is it uh, free convection? Is it force convection? Or what? Mix. Or it's, a, or it's a mixture of both. Okay. So now, how do we determine that? Although there is some air motion, but this is also heated and there will be also buoyancy forces effect here. Okay. So, how do we determine it? We determine it by this ratio. Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square. If the Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square is approximately equal to 1, that means it's a combined effect. So effect of buoyancy force will be there for heat transfer as well as effect of uh, external flow will be there. If the Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square is much less than 1, so that means it is free convection. Effect of Reynolds number is negligible. Then we can consider it as free convection. If the Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square is much greater than one, then then sorry, then it is if 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 Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square is much greater than one, so that means GR value is much greater. So sorry, then it is free convection. The other was force, force convection. If it is less than one, if yes. Grashof number divided by Reynolds number square is less than one, then free convection effects may be neglected. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is written like that. Free convection effects may be neglected. You just just look at the ratio. The GR value divided by Reynolds number. And it is less than one. That means GR value is very small. That means effect of buoyancy forces are small, negligible. If GR divided by Reynolds number square is very larger than one, one much higher. Much higher means the, the Grashof number effect is significant. So that means now we have to consider it is free convection. Otherwise it is forced convection. And if it is approximately equal to one, then it is a combined effect, okay? So anyways, this is the fundamental process through which we determine whether a flow is free convection dominant, force convection dominant or a combined of combination of free and force convection. This is how we determine. Is it clear or not? So consider when these two paragraphs very important for the conceptual point of view. When less than one, hmm? force con convection. If less than one, force convection. Force convection. Much greater than one, free convection approximately equal to one combination of force and free convection. Okay, this is uh, basically the non-dimensional or similarity analysis. 
Um, we are not going to focus on that. So now let's come over to uh, the laminar and turbulent flows. Similarly, like we had in the case of external flow, in the case of internal flows, we also have the laminar and turbulent flows for this case as well. What is the criteria? We have to formula book it will be there it will be there formula book, okay but anyways you should also remember it now for for this criteria to determine whether it is uh, uh, a laminar flow or a turbulent flow there is another number which is used which is known as Rayleigh number <laughs> the Rayleigh number is what Renal, Renal number is just a multiplication of Grashof number multiplied by Prandtl number. Grashof number multiplied by Prandtl number. So this is the Grashof number. There is a mistake here. Prandtl number is not written. So Prandtl number will be what? Will be mu upon alpha, right? Mm -hmm. So this mu will cancel with this square, right? So this becomes this becomes the equation for the relay number. Okay, and relay number is the one with which we determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So the the, the transition or critical relay number is ten raised to the power nine. If the relay number is less than ten to the power nine, laminar. If the relay number is greater than ten to the power nine, turbulent. Equal transition. Equal, you not, never come across. Consider equal as turbulent. Okay. So by less than 10 to the power 9, laminar greater than 10 to the power 9, turbulent. So now you have another number. Relay number is determined. In all. So Grashof number is used in the analysis of free convection. But relay number is the one which determines whether the free convection is laminar or turbulent. Empirical correlations. If it is a vertical plate, this is only for the case of vertical, vertical plate. If it is a vertical plate, then the Nusselt number is given by this equation and this equation and this equation. Anyone can, we have criteria. Look, this is for all the conditions. So, whether it is laminar, whether it is turbulent, you can use this one throughout. But as I told you, what, what these correlations are, many different scientists made their experiments. They finally, in the end, after doing a statistical analysis, they come up with their equation. Okay, so, so you will find this overlapping a lot. One of the guy did experiments under certain conditions, other guy did experiment under under certain conditions, but might be there is overlapping. They also did for same conditions which he did. Okay? So for example, this set of correlation is developed for both laminar and turbulent flow. However, this correlation is developed only for the laminar flow. Okay? And the first one is there for both laminar and turbulent. Okay, but here you have C and N value. So if laminar, then C and N value will be this. If turbulent, C and N value will be this. So the easiest one to use is the first one. Yeah. So in case I did not specify which one to use, you can use any one. Okay. So say if I do not specify which one to use, you are free to use any one. But only whenever you are using any correlation, make sure that you write this right, you determine the conditions, okay? Suppose if you if it is a laminar flow, you wanted to use this equation, fine. But if it is turbulent flow and you use this equation, wrong. Okay. Suppose you wanted to use this equation, the case is turbulent and you, you use the value of CNN for laminar. That's wrong. Okay. So since there are more than one equations. Okay, so you, if, if it is not specified, you can use any one. And 
if you have used any one with the right conditions, I'm not going to deduct, deduct the mark. Okay. 